So we got it running. Runs pretty good. I got this little guy for the A-axis. Except it comes with this little motor and I don't have the driver for it right now but I should be getting my hands on it pretty soon. I'm betting it's 24 volt being that small and it's clearly brushless so I can't use any of my current servo drivers on it. But that will give me my A-axis. Oh yeah, this is off a, a little bench top and the table is moving right now. This is off a little bench top um, CNC lathe. It's got a ratcheting system in there, so, and it's, um, oh, what is it for? It's for the turret, for the tool turret. It's got a worm gear. I had no idea what the pitch of the worm gear is or anything like that, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. And I'm gonna have to figure out how many lines this encoder has because it is almost completely barren of anything except for that little serial number right there. So, also I thought it was a stepper motor because there's a there's a very very clear, you know, indication as you move it that okay, it feels like there's steps. But I opened it up and sure enough, it's uh it's brushless. So I was I was kind of shocked with that. Put in the uh, the home switches for it, so it homes itself now. That's a limit. That's the home back there, back down there, and it just uses the old tug for where it originally was the home. I think the boat's not working right now, but you would have just eyeballed that, so that would have lined up, and that's on every axis. Here we have it on the X, and subsequently on the table. And of course, it's back there. That's how they used to home it, but I put these switches in. I could not get that switch up there to work properly. It keeps giving me, uh, it keeps going in the wrong direction every time it tries to touch off home. So every time I would hit home, it would go down instead of up. So, I, And I played around with it, couldn't figure it out. Another complaint for your X, for my X. I don't know if this is just something that was fixed in an update. This is not the real number. This is actually multiplied by two for whatever reason. So I went into NDI and programmed a G53 move and it gave me the right coordinates. So I was like, okay, what the heck is going on? Here's the end of the program. What the heck is going on here? If it's actually moving real world, it's moving in the right direction, but this is giving me a false read. We go here, hit the full screen, and it gives us this coordinate system, which is actually the real coordinate system that it reads the G code from. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but as long as it works, and I know to go off this number, and not for whatever strange reason, this number, I know we're good. All right, so besides that weirdness, I haven't had anything else go on, like positionally weird. I was messing around with the pulleys and trying to set it up inside the software. And I was getting that that weird number that was always like double or if I changed the pulleys and I was trying to trying to rat it out and you know throwing an indicator on here trying to zero it on the indicator and then move it in the direction and if I jogged it it was giving me this number but I know that with the G code it is giving me the proper number and it is moving correctly. It's just that guy. Also, definitely prefer this GUI for Linux CNC. Uh, G Screen is the best. And I've had people ask me over Instagram, what is this theme? Or what GUI is this? It's G Screen with the preferences. If you go into preferences, you can change it to, oh, I think it's Dusk. Actually, let me look it up real quick. It's right here. Mm, yeah. 
XFCE desk right there. And I've got my phone flipped around, so it's kind of hard for me to orient it, but that's what I have it on, and it looks really good. Um, way nicer than some of the super 90s feeling GUIs that Linux comes with. Um, and it, it is nice. Do I prefer it over a Fanuc controller? I'd say about half. Because there's no, on Linux, there is no wear offset. And with all of the industrial controllers I've worked with, there is always a wear offset. And that bugs me that there isn't. So it's unfortunate, but you have all your other tool offsets. And wear offset usually works better with lathes. Um, because you're wearing away that tool and you've only got one cutting surface with a mill You usually have Two or more there are one One flute cutting bits, but those are those are more relative to routers Which a lot of people do make these machines into routers not not these machines But they make they make a Linux CNC machine and they make it a router because they don't have you know a ton of cast iron in their garage so I was really surprised with how simple it is to set up for the, uh, the servo drivers. I had one issue with balancing where it would just flip back and forth, well, which you can feel, like if you grab it, you can feel it just ever so slightly. And it gives you a little bit of a wiggle, but with the belt. All right, so sorry, air compressor came on. Um, so the issue with it, wiggling back and forth and all servo motors do that digitals uh, servo motors running off a digital drive will do it significantly less than analog which I'm running analog also if the driver for this guy isn't analog I'm gonna have to figure out some way or get a new servo motor Even though this is a nice little guy it's probably only 24 volt but I'll have to figure it out so yeah um, so I was getting shaking and the only way I could figure out how to do that is not tuning it in here, not tuning it in Linux, but tuning it, uh, on the board itself with the little, little knobs. <clears throat> and it was, it was a self balancing issue where the voltage wasn't high enough. So it was not catching itself in time, um, as these do now. And with Linux... If it moves without the machine telling it to move, it will shut down. It will essentially air out and you stop, which is nice. Because if you have a runaway motor like the tachometer or the encoder goes bad, where that motor will run at 109% RPM, uh, of its RPM, and trust me, they do. I did that enough uh, trying to figure out how to set these up. Not with the belts engaged. The belts are not engaged, so we're good. Um, and it's it's scary because you know if if wire comes loose, your tachometer is no longer reading, or your encoder is no longer reading, it's going to want to spin, and it will spin uncontrollably at whatever it's got, and it will give it all it's got and break the castings on your machine. So that's kind of a thing you need to watch out for. Um, it's one of the things that I would suggest uh, a closed loop, a closed loop or a stepper motor with an encoder attached to the back. Uh, there are plenty of, of videos showing just how to do that on YouTube. That's not really a hard thing to do. You just add an encoder on the back and figure out, either have a closed loop driver with it or use a board for Linux that runs uh, encoder and can take the I.O. from the encoder and translate it to the program. So yeah, jitter was another reason why um, stepper motors would have been better for this uh, because it, that jitter, if it's excessive, it can show up on your parts. So that's fun. Um, downside to how this machine's constructed though, which is a bit of a tangent from the CNC part of things. Air compressor always has to run with this machine because it's not a counterweighted system, which really sucks. So we've got this big cylinder, 
back there and that gives us the pressure and offsets the uh, the head so that the uh, the ball screws don't eat themselves up over time because it's not an acme thread it is a ball screw on the z actually everything's ball screw but that's standard so yeah i've had no issues with this it's pretty solid i'm i'm surprised because i figured i figured i'd have to figure something else out or the drivers were unknown to me and I have drivers or a, a PDF of the drivers, but they're not in this. Well, they're in the same series, but they're like a few generations older. So, and I couldn't find anything online. Like there's some eBay stuff about those drivers, but nothing solid. So trying to find it, it's kind of a trial and error thing where I hope this won't blow up. I hope this, you know, passes the smoke test as I plug it in. And it worked out. So I still have that extra fourth axis. Again, I can't use it for this guy. So I could legitimately take this and after a while, if I really, really wanted to, and this probably can't take much torque, if I really, really wanted to, I could probably do a fourth or a fifth axie on this. I don't think I would ever need that. It'd be cool. Um, Fusion isn't the best software to be programming four axie work or five axie work in, four or five for that matter. It's it's kind of weird. There is some workarounds. You do have to do some extra work. It is doable. It's actually pretty nice once once you work it out, but it's complicated, unfortunately and more work so but what are you gonna do but anyways one of the first projects once i get a vice in here instead of this old four jaw which i guess it will work it, it will work but it's not the best solution first project get, that off there. get this deck the top off give it like an l shape that way there's a good register on the back for that. Deck both, well, it's sheet metal, we can't do that, never mind. But anyways then, machine keyway, the bottom of this guy. That way I got a good register and do a hole and everything for a nut, a T-slot nut. And probably countersink it because it's, you know. Yeah, I probably have to counter sink or counter bore just so the fastener sits down flush. That way it's not going to give me any issues, but it will be a nice little four axis machine. Uh, no provisions for the automatic tool changer because this is, there's no way you could, no way I could legitimately do a tool changer on this particular setup. Not because it would be too hard to do, say, a carousel or an umbrella. I've got a PLC and with the classic ladder, ladder logic, you can do uh, digital outputs for that. And you can do a G code that puts out a digital out to a particular IO port. And then communicate with PLC that way, which I would suggest, I don't know if I do Arduino just because I don't know how stable Arduino is for a long period of time. Um, so if you can get your feet wet and do PLC work, I would do that. But a lot of people can't, and that's understandable because PLCs are inflated and expensive, uh, at least the Allen Bradley type. Allen Bradley or Siemens are both uh, quite an expense, and for obvious, it's not going to happen. So I'd go with uh, Automation Direct. They've got some that are cheap like $60 range for the processor itself, which is not bad. And you don't need much IO. Anyways, <clears throat> getting back into this. Yeah, fourth axi, fifth capable. The reason the spindle currently is not capable of having a tool changer is because there's no way to orient the spindle. It is a, I think it's a J2 clone off a of bridge fork. And there's no way you can orient it because if you would change this, you'd crank this over and change it, which you're not supposed to do while the spindle is not moving. If you were to change it while 
it's oriented and you have a servo driver up top or servo motor up top for the spindle, you have an issue because the second you change this, your orientation's off. So there's no real way to do it with a J2. That's why I went with the, v, uh, the VFD I did. That way if I can come across, say, a Haas mini mill uh, spindle off an old scrapped out mill, as long as the spindle bearings are good, I can make a bracket and replace this guy and put a tool changer on it. Maybe. Assuming, because most of the scrap down. Sorry about that air compressor. Anyways, uh, most of the scrapped out machines are scrapped out either because the controller went bad or the spindle crashed down on the bed. That's why I've got, I've got the spindle actually moving for the Z-axis incredibly slow, like at 30 inches per minute, maximum rapid, which is, it's slow, but I can stand by the e-stop and have ample time just looking at the distance to go and just examining it. So, yeah, it, it's gonna be Russian roulette trying to find a, a different spindle eventually for this guy. But anyways, I think that's all I got for this one. So, if you made it this far in the video, I commend you. And as always, thanks for watching.